looking at the ingredients, it kind of sounds like a bit of a car crash. <coughs> Not gonna lie, it smells rank. Mm. I love pickles. Well, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with Kira. My name is Kira, and I'm a whiskey loving Irish gal who's on a cocktail voyage of discovery. If you are new here, I have zero professional bar experience other than a passion for making mixed drinks at home and showing you how I do it. So hit that subscribe button, stick around, and we both just might learn something because if I can do it, you can do it. So in today's video, I'm going to be making another cocktail that I have never made at home before. It is also one that is a little bit of a Marmite cocktail. People either love it or they absolutely hate it. So today I'm going to be making a Bloody Mary. So I feel like a Bloody Mary is one of the most recognizable cocktails out there. Even if the image of it actually fills you with dread, I feel like this is definitely a love it or hate it type of cocktail. The fans of Bloody Marys absolutely love them and the people who don't like them absolutely hate them. So I have to say, I have had very few Bloody Marys in my time. I think the last time I tried one could have been five years ago or more. And I feel like my palette for cocktails was still kind of blossoming. So. I didn't really enjoy it when I first had a Bloody Mary and I feel like I need to revisit this drink. So the interesting thing about a Bloody Mary is that it is hailed as a fantastic hangover cure. And I always find this really funny because the drink itself is such a unique savory concoction. It can get a little bit monstrous depending on what ingredients you use. And we will get into those in the ingredients. However, what I find strange is that if you are suffering from a hangover, you know, it can come in many forms. They have many different ways of, of hitting you but one of those can be a sensitive stomach and you can kind of only want plain or simple food. So I would imagine that if you're suffering from that, a Bloody Mary in all of its kind of glory is one of the last things that you're gonna want. But the devout fans do say that if you can stomach a Bloody Mary after a night of drinking, that it will cure you. So I'm very, very curious to make this drink for the first time and see if I enjoy it. So before we get into the history of a Bloody Mary and I show you how I make it at home for the first time, I would like to take a second to to tell you about my Patreon. Not only is it a great way of supporting my channel, but you can also have access to exclusive content. You can join in on my monthly live stream. You can also have exclusive discounts for my newly launched merch, of which I am wearing currently. And you can also see the footage that is just too tipsy for YouTube. Now let's get into the history of a Bloody Mary. So like a lot of cocktails that we've looked at here on this channel, the exact roots and the exact inventor of the Bloody Mary is a little bit contested. So history often credits a certain Fernand Petio, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, for creating the original Bloody Mary in Harry's New York bar in Paris in around the 1920s. However, it has later been somewhat debunked and apparently he basically did his own twist on a pre-existing recipe. So apparently the original creator of the Bloody Mary is a George Jessel who was a Hollywood film star in America from about the 1920s to the 1950s who created this drink and coined it the Bloody Mary. So it's interesting to note that this is quite an old drink. It has been around for some time and also it has many different variations. You can have the Asian Mary, which I believe includes soy sauce, wasabi, and ginger. There is the Bloody Caesar, which includes clam juice, which sounds absolutely gack. There is the Bloody Maria, which uses tequila, and there is also the Red Snapper, which uses gin. So as I mentioned, there are a lot of different variations on a Bloody Mary and you can add a huge amount of flair, particularly with your garnishes and your personal preferences. But for today's video, I'm going to stick to as original a recipe as possible. So let's get into the ingredients for a Bloody Mary. So as I mentioned, the ingredients for a Bloody Mary can vary greatly, but it does have some strict staples. And of course we are looking at vodka and tomato juice as the base for this drink. So I have some absolute vodka here, which we are going to use. And I also have some Tesco fresh 
pressed tomato juice. I really don't know a lot about tomato juice, so I think this is the type of one that you would use. So for the traditional Bloody Mary, it seems that you use a couple of dashes of Worcestershire sauce. I always struggle with pronouncing this. Worcester, Worcester, Worcestershire. I really don't know. It's really tricky, but I have some Liam Perrins here, which I love to use on a cheese toasty. Never thought I'd be using it in a cocktail, but here we are. And then we're also going to be using some Tabasco sauce. Now I am a hot sauce fan. I love the Sriracha hot sauce. It's just perfect to go on anything. I'm not really a fan of Tabasco sauce, so I don't really like the idea of using this in a drink, but like I said, I wanna to stick to as true to the recipe as possible. So I also have some fresh celery for this drink. And again, I'm not really a fan of celery either. Don't really like the taste, but this is the quintessential Bloody Mary garnish. So we're also going to be using some fresh fresh lemon juice in this drink. And to finish it off, we are going to be using some salt and pepper. Mm, looking at all the ingredients, I am quite dubious. Like I said, the last time I had a Bloody Mary was a really long time ago. Didn't really enjoy it that much. I do believe my palate may have matured slightly since then, but looking at the ingredients, it kind of sounds like a bit of a car crash, but needless to say, this could be great. So let's go in with an open mind. So let's go ahead and start making a Bloody Mary. All right, so I'm just gonna start by popping some ice into our mixing glass. I believe you can technically shake a Bloody Mary, but you're supposed to be very careful about thinning the tomato juice. You don't wanna do that. So I'm going to quickly have it in this mixer, give it a little stir, and then we can transfer it into our glass. Okay, so we're gonna start off with 60 mils of vodka, which is a pretty hefty shot. Certainly if you were feeling a hangover, this would probably revive you. And then we're gonna go in with our tomato juice. Now, it doesn't necessarily give me a measurement, but I think I'm gonna go in with double that of tomato juice and we'll see how we go. We can top it up if we have to. Honestly, I really don't know what to think about tomato juice. It's never something I would order. So we've got our vodka, our tomato juice. We are now gonna go in with three to four dashes of Worcestershire sauce. It just feels so weird to be adding this in. So one, two, three, four, that seems like a lot. Now we're gonna go in with three to four dashes of Tabasco. Once again, one, oh, two, three, four. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Next up, we're gonna season with some salt and pepper. So we're gonna do a little bit of pepper and then I'm gonna sprinkle in some smoked Ackle Island sea salt. Honestly, this just seems so bizarre. So now we are just gonna quickly do a squeeze of lemon juice. Honestly, who knows? I feel like if you're a fan of a Bloody Mary, you probably have a preference for all these ingredients because I don't really have much experience with it. I don't know. So we're gonna give this a nice stir. <coughs> Not gonna lie, it smells rank. But again, open mind people. So our Bloody Mary is stirred. Now it is time to decant it and strain it into our glass. Now we can top up with tomato juice if we feel like we need to. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, happy with the measurements. Now let's go ahead with our garnish of our celery. <laughs> I'm really not sure. So we're gonna pop our celery in here. I think our Bloody Mary is officially done. As you can see, you've got a nice stalk of celery, which to be fair, visually is very appealing. I think the contrast of the colors look very interesting and refreshing. I feel like I could do a little bit more with the garnish. I might have pickles in the fridge. Let me just check. Of course I have pickles. All right, so I'm making an executive decision, oh my God, to add some of my absolute favorite. I love pickles, but I also love mini pickles. I think they're called a cornichon. So I'm going to add maybe three of these on a cocktail stick because I feel like they'll add to the vibe. I often see Bloody Marys served with mini pickles, so I feel like we're kind of on the right track. Oh my goodness, that looks gas. Now our Bloody Mary is officially done. We have some pickles, we have our celery, we've got our gorgeous color. Very curious to try this drink. So if you will join me over on my cocktail drinking chair, let's try a Bloody Mary and see how she tastes. Okay, so we are back in the cocktail drinking chair. I have my Bloody Mary here. I've grabbed a straw just for easier sipping and <laughs> I'm actually nervous to try this. Um, yeah, so there's no point in delaying it. I'm just gonna try it and see if I enjoy it. Cheers. Mm, you know what? It's not the worst. I thought I would hate it more. 
I feel like it needs more vodka. Is that weird? I feel like it could be stronger. I'm not really getting much vodka. I'm just getting tomato juice and the kick of Tabasco. Shockingly, the Worcestershire sauce actually works with it. I really didn't think that it would. I feel like it's nice tomato juice and I think that that makes all the difference. And actually, if I was going for a Sunday brunch after a night out with the gals and we were regaling stories of the night before and I wanted something to have with my eggs and avocado or whatever, I wouldn't say no to this. If it was made well with nice ingredients. Honestly, the more you drink it, the easier it is to drink. That first hit was very harsh. You can really feel it in the back of your throat. Now, the ultimate test is, will I enjoy the celery? Oh my God, I really don't like celery. It's really not that bad. Okay, I'm gonna eat one of the pickles and then I'll compose myself because I feel like this is a meal in itself. I've heard of people serving Bloody Marys with like chicken wings and stuff on them, which initially I was kind of horrified by, but now I'm like, mm, I could go for a chicken wing. Mm. I love pickles. I think it's safe to say that I have become a fan of a Bloody Mary. I'm very much looking forward to having one of these in a restaurant um, when I'm having brunch or something like that. Like I definitely think you need to have this drink at a certain occasion. It's not something you'll be drinking on a night out. I, I would be very worried if your drink of choice on a night out was a Bloody Mary. I would find it very, very messy to drink, but a single one at brunch, something like that, I think would be really, really nice. So for those of you who are Bloody Mary fans out there, and I know there are some of you who do love this drink, how do you make yours? Is there a specific way that your favorite bar or restaurant does it, or do you make them at home? I would love to know what kind of ingredients, spices, savory ingredients or what kind of garnishes you use because I feel like this is an entry level Bloody Mary but I feel like there's there's a long way we could go from here and of course if there are any other cocktails that you regard as hangover cures do let me know and I can make them for the channel we've already looked at the suffering bastard we have now done the Bloody Mary I know there are a few other ones out there so if there are those or any other cocktails you would like to see me make just let me know in the comments below if you liked this video feel free to give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more easy cocktails that you can make at home I will leave a link to a playlist up here and if you have not already then be sure to subscribe to my channel I post new videos every single week and I would love to have you back for more thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one cheers